welcome to this edition of Tony G. Create a life you love. Today we're going to be talking about how you take your passion, turn it into your purpose, and make that purpose a viable career, a career you can survive and thrive on. We're going to be doing that with PGA Pro and owner of 4 Milwaukee, Tim Grogan. Hi, Tim. Hi. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It, absolutely my pleasure. So, Tim, you're now you're a PGA Pro, and you own 4 Milwaukee, which is located downtown Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Let's go way back to when this was an idea, when this is something that just started. Uh, you thought, hey, why not? Mm -hmm. How old were you when you first thought about golf? Oh, and in playing golf, and yeah, yeah I, was, um, I was eight years old when I first started. So I was playing baseball and other sports, and then uh, just started playing golf. And there was uh, a golf course not too far from our house, so then we started. Me and my brother started going there to caddy, and then if you caddy, then you got free golf on Mondays, and so kind of one thing just led to the next, and um, then just started playing some junior tournaments and had some success in some of the local ones, and just kind of kept going with it. Awesome. How did um, how did you know, or when did you know, you wanted golf to be a career? Like this is what I want to do with my life. Um, I would say you know probably eighth grade, um, and, and like all kids, whether they want to go play professional baseball or you have these these dreams, um, you know at that point I thought okay I'm going to play the PGA Tour and and uh, and pursue that, and so. Did well in the junior tournaments, uh, did well in some of the state events and some national things. Then, you know, that led to a golf scholarship, and then you continue from there, and you find out that there's a lot of really good players out there. So <laughs> you, you keep going with it as, as long as you can. So now a lot of kids, a lot of children, they do have that dream, whether it's NFL, NBA, or PGA. They're mm -hmm. thinking, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it all the way. Right, and then, like you said, you find out there's a lot of really good basketball players. There's a lot of really good football players, and a lot, a lot of really good golfers. How did you know what your next step was? Um, well, in college, this way to this day is I went to UNLV for college. Um, our golf program was pretty good, and then, you know, once you graduate, the next step is the mini golf tours, and you, you know, those are usually in Florida, um, out of Orlando. You play those, and, and some guys make it, and, and some guys who are college stars and first-team All-Americans don't. So you really don't know until you get to that next level. I think when you're you're trying to play the mini tours, which is the the next step after that is you know to play the PGA Tour. Excellent. Yeah. So now you teach golf. Yep. So you teach, and you've been teaching for quite some time. Yeah, I would say 22, 23 years since '92. Wow, that's amazing. So tell me, where do you teach and who do you teach? Okay, well, I have a, a business called Four Milwaukee, which right. is located right downtown Milwaukee. Uh, there are four golf simulators. There's a full bar in there, um, but that's where I do the majority of my teaching. There, you can teach in these simulators, which it's the closest thing to playing real golf. You're playing with a real club, real ball. You see the ball in flight. Um, so I do most of my teaching there with video. You can uh, video the swing, email it out to the person, and do the lessons there. Now I. I still am at uh, Missing Links up in Mequon, which is an outdoor facility, and that's more for the more of the junior golfers, more of the people want to be outside and see their their golf shots outside. So I'll mostly there during the summer months. So basically from April through uh, through October out there. Okay. So now you mentioned that's awesome. That's unbelievable. So you can teach pretty much anyone at any age. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at Missing Links we have a, a program. Three to six, we call it a tiger toddler program. Nice. Uh, Three-year-olds is just getting their attention, but you can, at about four or five, you can start teaching kids, you know, the grip, the setup, and they mimic so well. They can just see it and, and actually just replicate it and do it. But uh, anything earlier than that, it, it's just it's tough to get their attention. I think, but get uh, them four or five to be yeah. focused in there. Yeah. Yeah. So for Milwaukee, you said that there are simulators there. Mm -hmm. What do the simulators simulate? I'm not a, a golfie per mm -hmm. se, but explain if somebody goes in there and they want to use a simulator, what are they seeing? Yeah, a um, good way to describe it. It's the closest thing to playing real golf. So as I was saying before, you play with a real club, a real ball. You hit from, it'd be a cubicle, basically all enclosed, a big movie screen. And so you're hitting into that screen. As the ball's approaching that screen, there is sensors 
that read how fast the ball is going, the spin, the trajectory on it. So when the ball hits the screen, now that ball is in real flight. So the, the information goes from those sensors through the computer, up through the projector, and onto the screen. So it's, it's remarkable how fast it happens. But you'll see your ball in real flight just like you would outside. Um, and the, the graphics are of a golf course. It could be Pebble Beach. It could be really? Pinehurst. Any famous golf course is on these simulators. So you'll see your ball in flight. You'll see it land in the fairway. And it, the, the sensors know that that ball went 250 yards. It's in the middle of the fairway. So it's, um, it's, you know, it's very close to playing real golf. That's amazing. That's, isn't technology amazing too? What technology has come up with to allow us to do this? Yeah, I mean, you just see with some of the, um, the video games the kids are playing, those EA Sports games, uh, the graphics are just like a video. It's, you can't tell the difference sometimes between is this a real baseball game or is this just you know an EA Sports uh, with the yeah. graphics. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would think um, with technology in the next five years, it's, it's, gonna be, it's hard to imagine what could be out there you know, five years from now. Absolutely. So now you've played at a lot of the courses, right? Mm -hmm. You've yeah. played many of them. So would you say that the simulators are accurate to the courses? Yes. Yeah. Nice. I would, when you hit a good shot, uh, you know, just say you hit your seven iron and it goes 162 yards outside, it, get, it does that exact same yardage when you're inside in, in the Amazing. simulator. So it's, it's very accurate. So what is the um, clientele at four? Is it a majority of men, businessmen, is it because it's downtown? Are you getting that downtown? Yeah, I would say vibe? mostly, you know, it's a downtown crowd. It's a lot of guys that uh, live on the east side. They could be living downtown. Um, the good and the bad, I, I, we're probably 70% guys come in, but uh, okay. we just had Executive Women Golf Association last week. Uh, Amazing. So that, that's growing. We're getting more of the, the ladies to come in. But it is um, a wide range. It could be guys from you know, 18 years of age, we have high school kids that come in nice. um, to the 28-year-old young professionals that live downtown to some of the lawyers who are in their 50s, they come in. So it's, it's really anywhere from, you know, 18 all the way up to, you know, 65. We've got a big retirement group, too, that comes in. Amazing. Now, the people who are coming in, are they, they, they probably come in by themselves. Do they come in for parties and events? Do they do meetings there? Yeah, it's been a little bit of uh, everything. Uh, we've got corporate special events, so it could be a team builder for uh, a Johnson Controls or any close by company downtown. Uh, that could be 40 people. They could be um, their customers at one of the financial institutions that come in and want to uh, entertain 40 of their, their people. Um, birthday parties have been pretty popular and then bachelor parties are good too. Amazing. So, a little bit of everything. Now do you do group lessons at four? Or are they the in individual one-on-one? In small groups one -on -one? because those simulators, you can put anywhere from one person into a simulator or you could put up to six to eight into each one. So okay. usually the groups would be groups of three, okay. um, something like that. But most majority of the lessons are individual lessons. Okay. So if somebody wants to come to four, what are your hours mm -hmm. there? Yep. Uh, Monday through Friday, we open at 10 a.m. and stay open until midnight on Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday and Sunday, we open earlier. So we open at 8 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday and open until midnight on both those days. So that's perfect, like in the summertime after the, or before the summer festivals, like Summerfest and Festa mm -hmm. Italiana. If somebody wants to stop in and uh, hit some balls, they can do that. Mm -hmm. No, that's been very good about our location. We, we're on Water Street. We're, we're basically probably about five blocks from the Summerfest grounds, so whether it's Summerfest or any of the other festivals, we get people that are on their way down there, or at 10 o'clock at night, they're on their way back, and we do some fun events for them, whether it's a close as a pin event or something to, nice. to have some contest for that week of Summerfest. So. Excellent. Now, let me ask you, if somebody's coming there, can they bring their own clubs? Do mm -hmm. they have to, uh, do you have clubs they can use? Yeah, kind of both. It's. The more serious the golfer is, we recommend bring your own clubs. Just like going to the golf course, you'd like to play with your own set of clubs than getting a rental set at the golf course you go to. But we have rental sets there if people want to lug their clubs all the way down there. Uh, we've got plenty of clubs for people to use. There, a lot of them are demo clubs, and then we have brand new rental sets too. So. Okay, so if somebody comes in and they like, uh, uh, let's say that there's something wrong with their club, can you repair it there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do club repair, grip, and we re-grip clubs. Uh, you know, the head comes off or something needs repair, we can do that too. So is, does the head usually come off because they throw it in frustration? 
uh, no. some, but <laughs> because these heads are so much bigger, the, they're breaking more. The shafts are, are right by the head is where they're breaking more. So okay. they can break when they're normally <laughs> swinging too, but uh, could be from getting mad also. Okay. So do you have a pro shop? Let's say somebody like me comes in there and I swing the club and I just, I say, oh my gosh, I just love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, and we're I just starting And I want to be all in. Yeah, this spring we just started that where we will have the, the clubs demo, whether it's a, a pin club or Tour Edge, TaylorMade, Cali, any of the, the major brands. The nice thing is with the simulators, they can try them out. So we have the different clubs that they, they can try out from all the different drivers to the irons to the hybrids. And then we can order them up. And, and nowadays clubs come pretty quickly. You usually get those in 48 hours once you order them up. Very nice, excellent. So now, um, after you're done, this, you know, swinging clubs and or golfing, mm -hmm. right? that's what it's called. Uh, do you have a bar there where people can sit and talk and yeah, no, it's uh, we have two bars in there. So the front bar it seats about 20 people, and that's right up to the simulator. Okay, perfect. So you're, you're, you're on your bar seat and the simulator is literally five feet from you. That's amazing. Okay, so now we're going to get into um, a little bit more detail. And then because this is about creating your future and following your passion, we're going to go with that. So where is 4 Milwaukee located? Okay, it's uh, right in the heart of downtown. So it's uh, 530 North Water. It's between Clybourne and Michigan, okay. right in between the two, across from the Chase Bank building. So here's my question, one of my questions for you, because I believe, and I don't know if you feel this way or not, and sometimes we all have that intuition or that inner guide that we can follow or have a, 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 like a knowing of. Do you feel like you being in golf and where you are now was destiny? Did you co-create this? Was there... Or did you just did you just keep following those steps and it just here you are? Yeah, I, I guess I would think of it kind of as both. Um, I think just one step led to the next. You know, you know, once playing college golf and then pursuing playing, uh, I was college golf coach at Marquette University and then then led into teaching and doing junior golf camps and things. So just kind of one thing led to the next. If that's uh, a destiny, maybe, maybe that is then. But I just kept following the path that, you know, it's kind of whatever opportunities are in front of you, you pursue those and that kind of leads to the next thing. So clearly you love golf, right? To be this enmeshed in it. If somebody really loves something, what would your advice be to them as far as how to, uh, you know, if, if it gets difficult, because I'm sure there were times like that you thought, this is where I'm going to be. Okay, now that's not happening, but you really love golf. So what would your advice be when those blocks come in for people? What would you tell them to keep going? Well, I mean, just like you know, you're saying, you know, pursue your passion. You know, they say if you, you don't work a day, you never work if, if it's something you really enjoy. It's not like Absolutely. going to work and things. Yes. But I think, you know, golf is a business, so there is that part of it where it is, can be difficult or, or financially trying at, at some times. Um, but as long as you look at the big picture and just keep going along, you kind of know where you want to be or want to get to, um, it's easier to get through the kind of the stomach box along the way. Right. I do believe that each of us has a dharma or a purpose, something we're put here to do absolutely positively no two ways about it and when we're not doing that we feel out of balance we feel a little um lost and i i have so many people come to me and say i feel lost i i feel what am i supposed to be doing here mm -hmm. and inside of us is that knowing of what we love we all know what we love right mm -hmm. so if you didn't if you weren't involved in golf is there something else that you love enough that you could say, yeah, this would be my life? Uh, that's a good question. I, you know, I, to be honest with you, I never thought of doing anything but doing something in golf. Isn't that amazing? Um, but, yeah. um, you know, I would have had to switch gears, whether it's something in the financial world or something like that, or okay. insurance maybe, but uh, I would say um, I never really thought about the other options, I guess. That's, and I agree with that because when you when you soul, when you have your mind and your destination set, like you're d determined or you're saying, this is where it's gonna be, there is no other option. I believe the universe works with you to co-create where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. However, if somebody wants to put that in a more 
Western term, that's great. If they want to uh, say it the way I said it, that's great too. But I just believe there's a place we're all supposed to be and when we're there, we feel at peace or in harmony. So you decided to do for Milwaukee and downtown. What made you decide to put it downtown? Um, a couple of factors. One, um, I've always taught out at Missing Links up in Mequon and um, a good deal of the, the students were coming from downtown. Uh, there was, you know, road construction, there was traffic. So any time in the afternoon, there was always a delay in the lessons. It was because someone's 10 minutes late because of traffic. It's not their, their fault, but it just seemed very difficult to come from downtown to come to the suburb um, to do golf. So I always thought there should be something golf-wise downtown. Um, looked into driving range and, and plots of land down there, but uh, this seemed the most feasible to start with doing something with golf simulators and, and just bring golf close to you know, the, the downtown business guys. Um, there's more people living downtown. You can see with all those condos going in. Uh, a lot more apartments are down there, so there's just more people living downtown too. So that was, the, the, I guess, the, the main goal to it. Excellent. I have a question now that is a little bit different. How much of golf is about mindfulness and how much about it is about skill? Well, the skill is in the practice, I would say. The preparation, the, the skill, uh, to hone those skills and, and, uh, and to, to put the time and effort into that. Um, the mindfulness, I, you know, I, simplest way I could put it is, if you think you can do it, you can do it. You know, and they say all the great achievers do it twice. They imagine it first, and then they go through the real life of actually doing it. So in golf, I mean, the simplest thing is the, the shot that you have in front of you you better have a singular focus for that 20, 30 seconds that you have to pull that shot off. But um, you have to visualize it first. And I think the really good ones see it perfectly, crystal clear, and then they go ahead and do it. So if, um, if that's mindfulness and answers yeah, that, that's that is. That's partly it. Because I've always thought of golf as a, a game that you play in your head before you can play physically. Mm -hmm. um, and that is when you try to play it physically, it kind of messes up the shot when you, I, I don't know, would you say that's accurate? Well, I think kind of what you're trying to say, if you overthink it, if you yeah. analyze it too much and you think that this needs to be perfect and you just don't go with the flow of it, you're, you're not going to hit the shot that, that you want to hit. So there has to be, there is that skill part that I was saying before, the practicing of it, the, the physical part of it. But there is that where you just have to let go. You can't think about it. You, you should have done it enough. You visualize it, you feel it, and then you can actually do it. So Absolutely. So let me ask you this. If Tim today could go back and talk to that eight-year-old Tim that was, or eighth grade Tim, mm -hmm. that said, you know, I'm going to do this for a living, what are the three things today Tim, adult Tim, would say to that? Tim, to younger Tim. Well, that's, that's <laughs> tough. Um, I would say I would have probably looked more at the technical side of the golf swing and any changes, you know, it's easier to make changes when you're in eighth grade or, you know, 20 years old or things like that. So um, just where the golf swing was going, it's turned into so much of um, a power game. It's all about length and things like that. So I, I wish I would have uh, made those changes earlier on than uh, I may have been able to to play at, at a higher level. Um, but I, I don't know, I guess the other thing I'd, would be just don't sweat the, the little setbacks that you see. I mean, don't, don't get all worried about some of those things. Um, the third thing, I don't, you know, I wish I had an answer for that. I, I don't, <laughs> There's I, only two things you would go back and tell younger Tim, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of it right now, yeah. There's probably a couple other things. I, <laughs> I can't think of those right now. But. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. So. I teach, I teach a, a program called Create Your Future. And a lot of that program has to do with visualization, really being focused on your goals, knowing where you want to be, and not accepting anything else. Being practical, but not accepting other, uh, not, not having that default button, okay, this didn't work, I'm gonna go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. If somebody's uncomfortable in what they're doing, if they're not loving their career, is there a piece of advice you would give them to help them get into a place that they really love? 
And if, if I could say, so many people, you know, we're, they're taught as children, you need to go to school, you need to go to college, you need to get this secure, set check coming in mm -hmm. every single month or week, and you, you need to do this corporate life, and then you, you, it used to be you should have a pension or 401k, mm -hmm. and this is, but so many people are miserable mm -hmm. doing that, right? Yeah. What would you say to them, and then I'll tell you what I would say to them? Well, I, I think it's a debate for a lot of people. I mean, financially, um, some careers can be very rewarding, and you're into that for you know, 20 years, it's hard to walk away. I mean, right. financially right. things are, are, are doing very well. Um, but I've always said a lot of things in career or, or what life really is you learn some things that you don't want to do. I mean, you can have the passion for what you want to do and you know yes. what that is, but sometimes spending that 20 years is maybe it was just a process of elimination that you don't want to do this job or that job. And then you start seeing more clearly uh, what job you want to do or what uh, career you want to have. And, not everyone knows that when they graduate from college or know that at 22 years old. So I think um, I always just know there's, there's always different things you could do to make you happy and it's not all about the, the dollar sign on your, on your check, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a great answer. And one of the things I would say too to people is there are different stages in our life and each, each stage we might play a different role. For one stage, we might play the college student and then have this uh, corporate career, but it's never too late to start being the creator of your own destiny. Even if you have to start doing that part-time. Mm -hmm. um, people always say to me, I don't have time, and I always respond, well, how much time do you spend sitting on the couch mm -hmm. surfing certain, like, certain sites? And they'll say, oh, probably like an hour, two, three hours a night. And I'll say, well, if you dedicated that to what you really want to do, where your passion is, what you love, and you started doing that part-time, could you start building that momentum? Mm -hmm. The law of the universe, I think, says um, the energy that we're in or what we think about, more of that comes to us. So being mindful and mm -hmm. really focusing in on what we love and where we want to be, I think takes us a far, takes us pretty far also. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, I, I very much agree. I just, uh, you know, I used, when I was coaching, I used to tell them, you know, we have 24 hours in a day, so do all the other teams. It's what are you going to do with those 24 hours yeah. and, and how you can focus in. And it's, it's, I would think it's a little bit of a snowball effect. All of a sudden you're able to spend three hours a week doing it and now eight hours or whatever it is. So there's, I guess you're right. I mean, there, there is always time. If you can find, you just got to find a way to make time for it. So somebody who's watching, who is saying, you know what, I love golf. I want to, and, and maybe they're younger, maybe they're not younger, and they want to make it a part of their life or a part of their career. What's the one biggest piece of advice that you would give them? For someone starting in the golf business? Yeah, maybe it's a young kid who's, who's saying, you know what, I, I want to be the next uh, Tiger Woods or the next this person, what would you say to them? I would say um, go seek a, a PJ golf professional <laughs> and get your mechanics out. Make sure you've got uh, the, just the correct mechanics that you need so you can keep getting better. I think some people, their ceiling is only so high because of some of the physical things that they may have in their swing. So um, I think with that, um, and for a young kid to go out and hit it as hard as you can. I mean, it's a game of it's how far you can hit it now. The guy who hits it the farthest, it's Dustin Johnson. He's number one in the world. He hits it farther than everybody. So it just makes it an easier game. So I think that would probably be where the emphasis is, uh, you know, going forward with someone who's, you know, a 10-year-old just getting going. Yeah. Excellent piece of advice. My piece of advice is no matter what you want to do, be flexible in that. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to have the flexibility to think, I think it's going to go this way and this is what I want, but maybe the universe has a much better plan that's going to unfold for you or maybe something else might, might it might go in another direction first and mm -hmm. then get back there. So just be really flexible and don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, is that what right. you said earlier? <laughs> something like that, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the mm -hmm. Tony Jim yeah, Show, Yeah, thanks Tim. for having me. It's completely amazing. 
I want to say um, thank you for joining us today. We will be here with Tony G, Create a Life You Live, turning your passion into your purpose and your purpose into a viable career for you. Please don't hesitate to contact me at the website below, www.tonig.info, with any questions you might have on how to create the life that you love. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.